Paragon is a MOBA at heart, and as such, it follows the traditional MOBA format. There are three lanes, the left, right, and middle. Your objective is to destroy the enemy's core before they destroy yours. At certain intervals, minions will spawn for both teams and push each lane. You should help your minions push and use them to your advantage while also being aware of enemy heroes so you can retreat or move in for the kill when appropriate. In the top right of the screen, we have a mini-map that shows all the action going on in Agora. If your allied heroes or minions or you have vision of an enemy hero or enemy minion, they will also appear on the mini-map. In the bottom right we have your hero's abilities. Each ability is bound to a key which is displayed below. Abilities will appear with a padlock if you have yet to unlock them and once an ability is on a cooldown, a countdown will appear. The blue circle at the bottom of your screen is your hero's current level XP. The blue number inside the circle is your current level. The circle fills up the closer you are to leveling up. The yellow circle directly opposite the level XP circle is your card XP. Again, this circle fills up the closer you are to leveling up. You begin with your card XP on level 3 and you only ever level up in multiples of 3. Every time you level up, you get 3 card points. The two bars in between the card XP and level XP are your health and mana. The green bar is your health while the purple bar is your mana. Your max health and mana are denoted by the small numbers, while the bigger numbers indicate your current health and mana. Towards the right side of each of the bars, there are numbers next to a loop symbol. This indicates how much health or mana you regenerate per second. On the bottom left of the screen, we have everything to do with our cards. We can see our 4 active slots and 2 passive slots. Above our 2 passive slots, we also have how many card points we have left to spend. The four active slots have numbers displayed around them, 1, 2, 3 and 4. This indicates what number they are bound to on your keyboard. The top left shows how many kills, deaths and assists we have, while the middle bar shows the current game time as well as any allied or enemy heroes who have died. The number inside the picture indicates how long they have left until they respawn. Above an enemy hero's head, you can see a bar. This bar indicates their health, mana and current level. The health is orange while mana is purple. There are two types of XP that can be earned on the battlefield in Paragon. Level XP and Card XP. Level XP refers to the current experience of your hero, how much XP they currently have and how much they require till the next level. Level XP is earned by killing enemy minions, enemy heroes, enemy structures, neutral camps, and collecting and placing harvesters. Every time you level up, you are given an option to either unlock or upgrade an ability. The choice is completely yours. I suggest unlocking all your abilities before you start upgrading others. You can open your ability menu by pressing left control on the PC or L2 on the PS4. Amber Orbs are your ticket to successfully winning a game. Amber Orbs simply grant card XP, which when you have enough turns into card points. Amber is granted by killing minions, enemy heroes, neutral camps, destroying enemy structures or collecting allied harvesters. Amber Orbs appear as orange spheres on the ground. Make sure you pick these up, otherwise you won't receive any card XP for all your hard work. Minions are one of the best ways to get a lot of amber quickly, so you should definitely try to kill them as much as possible. One way to get bonus amber from enemy minions is through last hitting. Last hitting is a feature in a lot of MOBAs and Paragon is no different. Last hitting is when you get the killing blow on a minion or enemy hero. Last hitting enemy minions grants you bonus card XP in the form of amber orbs. These amber orbs, the orange ones, will fly to you if you last hit. If you fail to last hit, minions won't grant you bonus amber and only two amber orbs will fall to the ground which you have to collect. Any card XP you earn is shared with your allies near you, so if you're in a lane with another allied hero, even if only one of you is getting the last hit, you're still getting card XP for that. On the battlefield of Agora, scattered around in 7 different locations within the jungle are Harvesters. Harvesters grant global card XP. Unlike the card XP that you gain from killing minions, this card XP is shared with all your allies on the battlefield. You can build a Harvester without a Harvester key, although it will take a lot longer. If you do have a Harvester's key, you can build it within 6 seconds. 
Once you claim a harvester, a circle will appear indicating how much amber is in the harvester. Every so often you want to go and claim the amber in your harvester. Don't leave it too long however as once the harvester is full it won't be generating any more amber until it's empty. Harvesters are like structures, they can be destroyed by the enemy team, so remember to protect your harvesters while also denying the enemy their harvesters. Card XP is precious in Paragon. The card system within Paragon can be confusing for new players, so Paragon have provided starter decks for each hero so that you can familiarise yourself with them. There are four types of cards within Paragon, Active, Equipment, Upgrade and a Prime Helix. Active cards include Health Potions, Mana Potions, Scout Wards and Harvester Keys. These cards can only be slotted within slots that are designated for active cards. Active card slots are bound to 1, 2, 3 and 4 on your keyboard allowing you to use them at any time. Some active cards require charges. These charges can be recharged by returning to base. Equipment cards help determine how you are going to build your hero. You can slot an equipment card into any slot you wish, even an active one, although I recommend utilising your passive slots first. Upgrade cards can only be applied to equipment cards that have upgrade slots. You can currently only apply a maximum of 3 upgrade cards to any equipment card. It's advantageous to upgrade an equipment card to its max before buying another equipment card because most equipment cards provide a max bonus for when you fully upgraded them. Prime Helix cards are powerful cards that you can only ever have one of in a deck at a time. Prime Helix cards become active when your team successfully kills the super minion at the prime camp and deposits the prime orb at the specified location on the map. The prime orb is a team wide buff so once you complete the objective all the heroes on your team will receive this buff for the duration of the buff or until they die. Scout Ward provides vision of a certain area on the map. You can place a Scout Ward at any location you wish. The vision they grant is like a circular ball with the center point being the Scout Ward. Remember to keep an eye on your mini map because the Scout Ward will flash if an enemy enters its area. You may find a Scout Ward useful if you find that you're getting flanked quite often by the enemy team. Having a Scout Ward in a strategic position will allow you to plan your escape. Before you can destroy the core, you have to get through the towers and the inhibitors. Towers are denoted by the orange and blue circles on the map, while the inhibitors are denoted by the orange and blue circular symbols. Blue is friendly while orange is the enemy. You want to protect your tower as much as possible while at the same time trying to destroy the enemy's tower. Once a tower goes down, it never comes back. It's gone for good, so protect it fiercely. Inhibitors are slightly different. This is your last line of defense before your core. If your inhibitor goes down, the enemy minions in that lane will now become super minions. Super minions can easily push normal minions and as such will require a hero to defend that lane. The same goes for if you take an enemy inhibitor, you will spawn friendly super minions to help you push the enemy's core. Unlike towers, inhibitors do come back. After 6 minutes your inhibitor will respawn and the super minions will become normal minions once again. When attacking a tower or inhibitor, it's important to know that the tower attacks whatever enters its range first. Therefore, it's best to let your minions enter the tower range first. While in the tower range, try not to attack an enemy hero as the tower will automatically target you rather than your minions. The map in Paragon is quite big and because of this, it can take a while to travel across the battlefield. This is why Paragon have introduced travel mode. This allows you to travel across the battlefield at a quicker speed, but be careful, if you take damage from an enemy hero or structure, you'll be rooted into place for a short duration. You can enter travel mode by pressing shift and after a short period of time, your movement speed will be increased. If you use an ability or basic attack, you will exit travel mode. Alternatively, you can press control to exit travel mode. In the jungle, there are 13 neutral camps and one prime orb camp. Of these 13 camps, there are 8 white camps, 2 red camps, 2 blue camps and 1 black camp. The red, blue and black camps within Paragon grant an individual buff while the prime orb is a team wide buff as previously mentioned. You can check out a more in depth look at the jungle here as this goes beyond the scope of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and it taught you a lot of new things about Paragon that will help you in game. If it did help, smash that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below if you want me to include more advanced tips in my next guides. Subscribe for everything Paragon. And until next time guys, peace.